Hey, so hi everyone, welcome to a YouTube video with Seven Spirits and he's I invited him to join uh, join me today. Yesterday we played a game together. Um and I think we'll just talk through the game. Don't really know how this goes, but let's just see how it goes. Uh so welcome Seven. Uh do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, uh thank you for having me on a video. Uh I hope this is gonna work out well, but I think it'll be fun either way. Um yeah, I am uh, one of the many players who love Dune Imperium, and uh, I would say among people in the community, I probably have played less than a lot of people. Um, but uh, I think about the game a lot, and uh, I'll try to uh, hopefully share my best thoughts with you as uh, we talk about things. Yeah, so the, the first time I really heard about you as a player, I think it was the last tournament. I think you went undefeated in groups. And like everyone's a bit scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won the first four games, and uh, but it, it was a very frustrating experience for me be, be, because of uh, time zone issues, and uh, I felt like I spent as much time trying to schedule games as I did actually playing them, and so I I kind of really lost uh, lost heart after the, the the first three group games and started uh, not really trying hard, but just experimenting with stuff instead and uh quickly lost <laughs> yeah i i think um i think even in this tournament i don't think there's much room to experiment um i think in my group was fairly competitive How, did, did, are you playing in this current tournament no no oh, okay i thought you were yeah. destroying again, I, people I, I, again. <laughs> yeah i just decided uh that uh i get a lot of fun games just playing with people like this game here was pretty fun and i don't need the extra like tournament complications and scheduling stuff yeah okay maybe we can talk a little bit about that another time so we'll just talk about this game so in this game uh i think we haven't finished setup so we finished setup with uh seven you are currently in first position and i'm in fourth position when i look at this row this row is pretty dry and there's no real good card maybe uh still suit is it still suits or hard, uh, wind traps wind traps is okay and probably the the this tech the the six six costed tech let me go back let me pause let me just do a little bit more analysis before we start yeah, the shuttle fleet is pretty good because it gives you the two faction bumps and two Solaria turn is nice too. Yeah, but shuttle fleet is it's not really that early a game card. And so I thought that because of the Legion, uh, this would be a pretty good Ilban game in fourth position. Yeah. Interesting. So you were thinking of using the Sardaukar Legion like to go to green spaces because that's not something that I'd normally consider. I feel like using it to go to, to uh, a faction space is just more valuable in general. Yeah, in, in general, in general, if you can go to faction space, go to the faction space. But I think with Ilban, I value on play greens very highly. So if the green has a very good on play effect, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll gravitate towards uh That's a good Ilban. point. And I guess even if you are using it to go to Ember spaces, you're getting money, which is useful for Ilban. Yep. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so among the leader leader picks, I'm most like surprised by the Paul pick. I think Paul's a bad leader. <laughs> Paul's not a good leader. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that I'd say I was surprised. Uh, I mean, I I feel like people can choose things that aren't the best leaders, and maybe they're just doing it because they want to try out playing Paul or whatever. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So um, I picked the beast. I feel like he's a just very strong all around leader um, with certain types of hands. You have a chance of going smuggling twice early on and getting to eight Solari. Um, there's wind traps there, which is a good thing for the beast as well. Um, and I just enjoy playing him. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I have similar thoughts on the beast. Like when I wind traps, I, I, I gravitate towards him, but I, my win rate on beast is not very high. So I think first thing that we'll talk about is your opening. Uh, is there any reason you went for this opening? Yeah, so um, looking at my hand, I had all three of my uh, yellow cards. So I had both Experimentations and the Signet Ring. And for that reason, going to Smuggling was less appealing than usual because 
uh, it removes the off chance that no one takes it in the second round and I get to go there a second time. Um, so that's what I would have done if my hand wasn't like that. And so I just ended up thinking a little bit more and I thought, well, with the beast, you kind of want to get to a faction alliance quickly. And I think that makes um, going fold space a little bit worse because it is harder to get the spacing guild faction alliance um, in the first few turns as beast than it is like to get um, Fremen, for example. Um, so then that leaves trying to go into the conflict um, or doing what I did, which is something that I've never tried before. I I decided to go to wealth and then plan to follow that up with going to Dreadnought and just buying a Dreadnought round one. Yeah. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about my opening hand. If you look at my opening hand, sometimes when you have these type of hands, you don't really know how to feel about it. So I think these kind of hands feel, feel very terrible, but my win rate with them are actually pretty high. Uh, <laughs> Just high persuasion hands, uh, and just getting a good card round one. Uh, if you had a hand like that, how how would you feel? Yeah, I mean, I I think I'm usually sad to draw daggers on turn one, but happy to draw convincing arguments on turn one. And then, of course, it's always bad to not have faction access. But well, I mean, Randy, you have your signet ring. I I think probably what I would do with that hand is start by going to tech negotiation, actually, because I want to play two cards. And I want to find a use for one of my daggers. Okay. So so what I ended up doing is I ended up going to Arakeen. Um The reasoning is that I think there are a lot of good cards that you possibly could draw. And um, experimentation is not one of them. <laughs> But you know, yeah, there are two experimentations in there. Yeah, and but I, but, but I think I don't think anything is bad. I think okay, if you draw, I mean, yeah, we could, we could draw a okay, but, is bad. okay. Another thing you you might draw is reconnaissance, mm. and that's probably not good because someone might go to Carthag and then you can't even play it at all. Yeah, I yes. think it's it, it's reasonably likely that when you go there, if if you're not drawing a faction access card, you you might not be able to play the next card. <laughs> yeah. So, so sometimes my hands like this, I think about it in a way that, uh, well, if it's bad, it's just bad, and I'll just play like a bad start. But if it's good, you know, it can be, it can save my game. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, that's how I was thinking. Yeah. So, so one thing that uh, going to Arakeen start does is that it forces a reshuffle, and this comes up relevant this game because of how things play out. But we'll we'll let it play out. Um, and then you can see why why it is relevant. So I end up choosing to go to uh, when it comes down to me. I think I'll go to to tech negotiators if it's still open. Uh, Paul plays his ring. I think I mean I understand why he'll go into combat. Like um, seems fairly reasonable. Actually, I thought he'll go to Hardy Warriors and just like get a point. I thought he was gonna do that too. Yeah. Yeah. When he when he was ho hovering it there. Yeah. So tech, tech negotiators open to me and then I'll, I decided to just, just go and play for it. So so the reason I'm doing this um, is because of the Atomics. So the Atomics allows you to like trash and I think there are many cards in, can, that can cost up to six that are pretty good and it is a bit of a, well, a slot machine as Lannister likes to call it. <laughs> yeah. So already it it doesn't matter, I guess, that there's Sardaukar Legion there because if you're planning on doing Atomics anyway, then it's not going to help. Yeah. So so I, I, I know that Legion is good on Yoban, but I think mm -hmm. with Immortality, there are just so many cards which are better. And I think, okay, let's just, let's just try to high roll it. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so so what happens is that when it comes around to me, I immediately Atomics the roll, and uh, Twilight Suit Master is there. So this is the this is the one case which I think Twilight Suit Master is very strong. And I pick up this card, this uh, this this card I think that we talked about is Carrion. Yeah. Yeah. This or oh, Corino Jeans. Yeah, because it gives two salary. I I love that that gives two salary, and. I should put my actions where my mouth is so I pick it up. Yeah. 
What did you think about this combat quickly before it goes away? Okay. So no one put in more than two two troops and there's a victory point on the line. I think this is correct. So I think early on in Dune meta, like when there is a uh, point combat, right? Someone will definitely put in four troops. Um, I'm, I think I'm realizing more and more that there is an overcommit. In immortality, especially the amount of troops that everyone has somehow feels very little. Um, I think it forces players to even get dreadnoughts. Um, yeah, so I think actually three troops is the right amount. But what happens is that red actually, the cost that red played, let me just go back a little bit, was uh, red played, red played uh, two troops and an intrigue, which I guess is about equivalent cost. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, but the second the, but the second and third place for rewards for this are not exciting. I don't think anyone is excited by that. No, and in particular, I think this is like the conflict where more than any other one, the second place reward is almost the same as the third place reward. Yeah. Like I do think a water is a little bit better most of the time, but not a not not by a lot. Yeah. But I guess it falls hundreds in three. Let's yeah. just play it. Okay, so this is round two. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about Talixu Master. So Talixu Master, right, um, a lot of people have been saying that it's a broken card. And, and this is the exact scenario which I described, which is very, very strong, which is that you buy Talixu Master round one and you force a reshuffle. So it's in your deck and then you draw it round two. Um, and I never thought I'd be able to get it, but hey, here am I uh, with a bad opening hand and, and having it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. And you didn't even have to reveal early to do it. Yeah. I I think revealing early for for it, unless you reshuffle, is is terrible. Yeah. I mean, you can. I, I, I don't think I would do that either. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly not on the first turn. Yeah. Um, maybe on your second turn. Depends on what your other options are. Yeah. So, so I don't think my turns are very exciting. Um, but how how did this Dreadnought feel for you, this game? This Dreadnought actually, it was quite intimidating for me. I, I was afraid you would run away with this game. So I think in, in the first few rounds, it felt really good. Um, but uh, then things started to fall apart a little bit later. And I think we'll get to that then. But right now, I definitely felt very fortunate that uh, no one else went to Hardy Warriors, so I was able to do that. Um, because my first round hand had uh, most of my cards that let me go to spaces, right? All I have in my hand right now is two convincing arguments, two daggers, and diplomacy. So I'm really hoping that I can use diplomacy to send in some troops. Hmm. Okay. I don't, think, I, think I don't think that, anyone caught on I don't think anyone caught that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even think about it in my first hand sufficiently. I didn't think about the fact that I might not be able to put my dreadnought in when I when it got to my turn. And that would have been probably a good reason to not do this opening. But uh I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, we all need some luck sometimes. So 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 actually this game, right? I was thinking about it. Actually, Hundro had shipping the entire game. So a bit of spoilers, but I mean, Hundro can even use his ring round two, you know, and he goes he goes up and down. <laughs> uh, he's interstellar shipping from round two. Yeah. Did that was that a concern at all for you? Um, I I mean, I didn't feel like there was much I could do about it. Um, I don't generally like the thought of that you should spend a large amount of effort blocking single players because you have three opponents. And I, I feel like, okay, if he's going to have shipping every round, I care about one third about one third as much about that as I would if I get shipping every round. And you know, shipping's good, but I don't think it's that good. So I figured someone's going to get shipping. Maybe it's me, maybe it's you, um, and it's going to turn out fine. Um, I would be more worried if he also got a super fast Swordmaster, and I don't remember if he does or not. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't get one of the fastest ones, so yeah. that 
turns out good for us. Yeah, so so that's my exact feeling with uh, interstellar shipping. If if a player gets interstellar shipping and swordmaster, I am very very afraid. Uh, but if the player just gets one, I am I'm not too worried about it. Which is why I'm surprised he didn't take his bum. Did he take his bum anyway? He took it in Fremen. I, 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 uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know why. He, he, I, I would I'm have taken it in, in uh, spacing. I, I, I really usually do not like taking bumps in Fremen when they're wild bumps, unless it's fighting over the Alliance, because you want to go to the Fremen spaces. Yeah. So you want to take your bumps somewhere where you don't want to go to the spaces. Yeah. Okay, so mo a key moment in the game, you get Liet Kynes. Do, do you think it's important for you? Oh, yeah. So this had a big <laughs> effect on the game, um, mostly in a negative way, actually. <laughs> but certainly buying it was a really, really good idea um, because it puts me closer to the Emperor Alliance, and it's just a very solid card to have. Now, if you get the right deck for it, it can be an amazing card, a truly excellent card. And I sort of tried to get the right deck for it, but I didn't succeed at all, and it didn't work out. So um, this was both absolutely the best thing to buy right here, but it also uh, kind of hurt me um, because of my choices later. Yeah, I, I think it might have been better for you if you just kept it as an uh, excess card, just kept it as a uh, Fremen yeah, excess card. I think card. that would have been a totally reasonable thing to do. Mm -hmm. And like, I could buy one or two Fremen cards and then maybe if I draw it with the right hand, then it'll be worth four or six persuasion. And that's gonna buy a spice must flow maybe yeah um but i shouldn't have put um as much effort into it as i did probably yeah i i, th I, I, I think all like good players have this issue with leah kinds like when you buy leah kinds you feel almost compelled to buy fremen cards it happened to yeah. be another game as well you know? yeah i i haven't run into that before but um i'll try not to do it again <laughs> The other thing that 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 caused me to overbuy the fremen um cards is i feel like to some extent people um don't go for spice must flows enough and so i've been trying to go for spice must flows um in the games that i've been playing recently and so when i saw this i thought okay yeah i'll go for more spice must flows by buying more rackets liaisons and stuff like that um but yeah it wasn't a good fit with the early dreadnought okay that's that's an interesting take on on how the meta is Okay, anyway, did this combat, what int intrigued me the most is that blue di uh, did, that yellow did not even put in a troop. I think this will come yellow? back and hurt it. Oh, no, like green will not. Green did not even put in a troop. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, that seems like a mistake, probably. Yeah. So, so I value these early Solaris very, very highly. Like, yeah. I think this is round two. So, to me, right, the first place and second place rewards are quite similar. I, I, and just because it brings me to Swordmaster. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I, I I definitely value first place more than second place. Um, in part because it's also giving some more Solari throughout the game. Um, but also I think I would take a point over four Solari at this point. Even um, even round so, two. Yeah, I think I think I would probably value the Solari at. At most, like eighty percent of a point. Okay, that's cool. I mean, maybe it depends on the situation. Yeah, Swordmaster is certainly good. So, so I I, I was thinking about this like Corino jeans pick up. So, um, in this case, uh, because I came in second, I'll be at ten. But I think even if I come in third, I'll be at eight. So, I, I quite like the pick up. And yeah. Even though the, it sits in my hand useless this round. Okay, so round three happens. It's another point. So round one, combat point. Round two, combat point. Round three, combat point. And, and I get lucky with my Dreadnought. I go to Imperial Basin yeah. and, and the, the conflict for Imperial Basin comes <laughs> up. So fortunate. Yeah. So I, I'll talk a little bit about my hand. Um, I have two convincings, a dagger. Uh, experimentation and Taixu Master. So out, out of the five cards, you're not playing three of them, and you have two cards left. So if you're thinking about how to play this hand, play or think of the cards you're playing and and where they are going. So the dagger is going to Sword Master. Sword Master will draw me a card because I'm Ilban, and the experimentation is probably going to go to 
uh, collect the spice. And where do I want to collect spice? I want to collect spice where it's the best spot, which currently is the Haka Basin. I think it's best yep. spice for water. And one thing to note is that I have two cards in my deck at this moment, and I do not want to force a reshuffle. Okay, I I mean, if you're drawing, right, so a lot of times at Silban, you just meant that. I mean, I have 10, I can meant that, and I can play another dagger to go to Swordmaster, but you don't want to do that because you have Toilet Master in hand, and you want to you want to discard it so that it goes to your next uh, it goes to your next deck when you when you reshuffle your deck. Do you take note so, of such things? Yeah, no, I, I I would definitely try to avoid shuffling the deck without the Playlaxu Master. Um, one thing I wonder, maybe Great Flat is better there than Haga Basin. I'm not sure, but the reason it might be better is because the rest of us would have to then compete over Haga Basin, whereas right now I'm the only person who can go to the Great Flat. Yeah, but that's only this round, right? So, I mean, yeah. this round you could have taken it, and if you took it, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine with you taking it. The After this round, it's, it's chaos all around with regards to water, because there's three water going around the table. Anyone could, could grab the spice. Yeah, mm. that's fair. And I do agree that you don't particularly need that uh, sixth spice right now. Yeah, and, and also I think the the sweet spot now with spice is uh, is getting up to buy the tech, so that's the juiciest thing on the board. So, f so four spice gets me there as well. Yep. If I didn't have the tech negotiator, maybe I'll consider going into the grave flat. That's right. I don't think anything notable happens. So I think we can speed it up slightly. So once again, we have Hundro going to uh, interstellar shipping. Um, and Paul, the whole game is drawing cards and researching. So every time, every time I talk about this, these shipping buttons, I'll talk about how much I hate them. So I'm just going to yeah. make a note that I hate these shipping buttons, and they should just be the the ones on the right. <laughs> and hopefully, people agree with me, and it, it gets changed. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So you, you chose to go to uh, Hardy Warriors again. Um, any reason uh, as compared to getting the spice? I think that's one thing that you... Do you consider? Um, no, I, I was really happy to be able to go to Hardy Warriors here because the uh, Imperial Basin is the best combat early on, I think. I mean, uh, you get a point and you also get some spice income throughout the game. It's... Uh, pretty valuable. Um, and I'm, I'm extra excited because I have wind traps. So I not only get those things, I also get a water. Um, I think that's way more valuable than being able to collect spice when there's plus two spice. In general, I think of collecting spice when there's plus one spice as being like pretty average. So when there's plus two spice, it's better than average, but it's not like insanely better than average. It's just like a little bit better. And I won't go super out of my way in order to be able to get that. Yeah, but I, I agree that at plus one is, is an average spot that I don't really consider. Okay, Hundro... Can Hundro challenge? Hundro could challenge, right, if he goes to Kartek and... No, he doesn't have Spice. I guess he was, in he was blocked, <laughs> whether intentionally or unintentionally. He probably did want to come into combat. But yeah. you're already so far... And even if he went to uh, Imperial Basin, he could only put in four. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason I didn't put in my sixth troop when I went to Imperial Basin is it didn't seem like there was any way they could realistically uh, beat, beat me in this particular conflict. Mm -hmm. If you had one spice, would you put in the, the last one? Yeah. Yeah. So is this the hand that? Oh no, I think it's the previous round. <laughs> Never mind. There was one round where Green nuked everything, and oh, that, was, I think that was round two. And then now our Imperium row becomes all ones. This this game became a very dry Imperium row very quickly. Yeah, it uh, the fourth nuke was what did it right? <laughs> yes. It, it 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 gave us a a lot of terrible cards. Yeah. So this is one reason why I'm not sure if 
this is a good game to show off Tyrex Master as well because even though I got Tyrex Master, no one else got anything good. Um, and I got multiple good cards. I think the the luck will come to me in a sh- in a short while once Red buys a card. Oh, I I bought Face Dancer oh, it because great? it's Fremen and it's a reasonable card. I think it's a great card. Uh, I think it helps you. It solves a lot of your problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is the card that that Red buys and. So there's Twilight Sue Surgeon. Have you played this card? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really good. Being able to get two points on the Playlock Suit track is uh, excellent. I think in the middle of the game, so let's say if it's round three or four, I will pick Surgeon over um, Twilight Suit Master. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I think Surgeon, Surgeon gets you there in terms of the point, or maybe even two points. But you get two plays out of it, you know, you, you probably reach the end. But with Twilight Master, you get two two plays of it. I don't see. I at most get what a point. Yeah, I guess it seems pretty good. Um, I don't know. One thing about Playlocks Master is it gives its good stuff without having to be played, even right. You just do it during your reveal turn. Um, I see the 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 two research as about as good as the two scarabs. Um. Would you agree with that? How do you, how do you rank research versus scarabs? Um, I think when you two research is about one scarab. I think that's how if you look at the Imperium, the research rule, that's that's what it is, right? Right. You research twice, and most of the time you get get to one scarab. Then there are some benefits along the way. Uh, so and but but beetles are so limited in terms of research. You can't research your way to the end of the track. If you research the end of the track, most of the time you're just getting just to the just to the first point on the beetle track. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, anyway, so this is round f- four. So I, I saw I saw Twilight Master round three and I see Twilight Master round four. I bought it round one. Okay. And now I have decided to go to full space. And why have I decided to go there? I think I, I realized that I have a lot of extra ex- actions and I just want to convert those actions to points and faction cards get me there. And because the the number of cards that we have to play are very, very low cost, the cards I bought is just Twilight Sumaster and Surgeon and maybe Corino Jeans, but I don't really have a lot of cards to play. So I actually want... The card that I want is the full space and mm-hmm. not so much the the shipping. Because I actually don't get shipping. This is round four. I don't get shipping round four, five, or six. And round four and red is shipping again. Yeah. So in this round, um, well, I took the spice because it was a great deal. And um, for the first time in a couple of rounds, I didn't think that I could win the combat. So I did not put in any troops. I just put in the dreadnought. I figured... Hundra was going to come down on shipping. He was going to have a full garrison. He could go Swordmaster, and then he would be able to take the third action that deployed some troops, and that would be better than whatever I could do. Um, and that's not even mentioning the fact that you might be able to win the combat, or Green might be able to win the combat. So I thought this was a good one to uh, to uh, lie low on. Mm. What do you think about the fact that Hundra bought the detonation devices when both of us had a Dreadnought and he didn't? Um, uh, I don't like the play. Um, uh, but I think that the 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 value for detonation devices, right, in the recent tournament has been increasing. Like people have been buying it and winning with it. So mm-hmm. I, I think the overall sentiment of that card is increasing. Um, but in this position, I I don't really see why he would need that card. I mean, he said that it's to block it's to block you in particular, but. I think it's very expensive. It's a very expensive block. You're paying one spice and you're attacked by. Um, he could have got what invasion ships. No, well, he could have just yeah. came. He he could have just came down. He could have just not went up at all. So, I don't really agree with it. Yeah, um, I think so too. I think. Um, I mean, 
I guess it's blocking both of us, but another option is to try to let you block me or, um, you know, I actually think that if he lets me get it, then everyone's going to be more likely to try to stop me from winning conflicts. And that's kind of bad for me too. <laughs> um, I think his shipping position was pretty strong. He should be able to um, just try to win the game instead of trying to block a specific other person and he'll probably do better that way. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so so this uh okay, so the shipping player, so Hanjo in particular gets shipping round two, round three, round four. So I'm yeah. a bit sad that uh Paul went to to wealth and and I have talked about this in my review of Twisted Mentat as well. He he used Twisted Mentat to go to the Mentat spot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your opinions yeah, on Twisted Mentat? A couple times. Uh, which was not 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 good for you. Yeah, I I think yeah I, I was blocked on Mentat a few times, but I don't think it mattered. Like the the hands which I had, uh, Twilight Two Master, I didn't really need to Mentat. I just needed to kind of like play out my hand. But the, the hands I didn't have, uh, Twilight Two Master, I guess I was a bit lucky and I wasn't blocked, so I could just Mentat and and draw back into Twilight Two Master. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this game is going pretty poorly for Paul. So what happened? Paul round two had a very big buy hand. He had decent buys, but he 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 went to roll the dice and he nuked the roll and it became all bad. And I don't think he ever recovers from it. This game, okay. So I think in terms of points wise, you can exclude Paul. Um, he also is always near eight salary, but never at eight salary. So he never really gets his sword master as well um yeah so so this is round uh four and i think round four is when hundro got his sword master which is decent i guess yeah i think round four is is still okay um round five is you know acceptable yeah um i actually wasn't totally sure whether i should be getting my sword master or not but I thought at this point I had enough like um, diplomacy. I had the um, the the uh, face dancer potentially Leah Kynes, and I think I still hadn't been able to use the um, Imperial Spy that I bought early on. So I wanted to be able to take more actions. Um, so yeah, it seemed good to me to get to eight Solarian set up for getting a Swordmaster next turn. Yep. Do you agree with that? I mean. I, w I would say also, like, this is about the time where it felt like things started not working as well for me. But um, maybe that was more the uh, cards that I bought rather than the Swordmaster. So the thing about Beast, right, is that I, my win rate with Beast is actually not very high. Uh, my, my win rate with Beast is mediocre at best. Um hmm. But when I see the stats for Beast, Beast is winning like 30% of, of the games that he's playing. And I, I, I've been trying, you know, and I haven't been winning with him. Um, so I, maybe I'm not the best to advise. <laughs> but I, yeah. do, I do not like late Sword Masters. Um, if it's not easy to get, I, I'll, I'll just avoid it. And I think paying 4 Spice actually is quite high a price for it. But, but I mean, round 5 is... It's still okay. It's not. It's not the worst. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean the the four spice was also paying for two troops and an intrigue card, right? So yeah. Um. I think conspire is a good spot. I agree that four spice was expensive. Um. The reason that I think beast is so good is because he he has one of the most powerful signet rings. Uh, just the being able to put in two troops. Um, even aside from being able to, to deploy them, that's that's pretty strong. That's comparable to Duke Leto's one, right? Yes, I, I think I think once you can put in two troops, the ring is very very strong. I'm not able to get the alliance very early, or when I'm when I even get the alliance, I don't manage to defend it very, very early as well. Yeah, maybe he's a little bit less good than that. Um, even even just putting in one troop, it's still a pretty good ring, and uh. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I could be overestimating. I, 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 ha- I have a theory what? on immortality, though. Oh. I think that in immortality, the ring leaders actually do take a hit because they are oh, yeah. more because previously all the yellow all your yellow actions you you want to be using a ring but now your your yellow actions you want to be using experimentations so like players haven't really like figured out the the weights of when to use a ring or when to use experimentations that's a good point yeah that's a very good point you do want to play experimentations rather than revealing them if you can I, I guess all the analysis that I've done on the game has just been with base game and X. I, I haven't re- really tried to um, go deep into figuring out how things work in immortality. So that makes sense as something that would be different between them. Mm. Okay, so, so this combat reveals itself, and I'm quite happy it's not a point. There have been so many points flying around, and, and I'm sitting at two points, even though I played Talix Master twice. Uh, but I think this particular round is when it starts to really accelerate for me. So I get high counsel. The reason I got high counsel is that Hundro does something very strange. Is that Hundro goes to um interstellar shipping and he goes up and down, right? So it telegraphs that he wants high counsel. I mean, what else could he want a dreadnought? Um, and I think he actually wants a dreadnought because of his tech. <laughs> Uh, which is oh, yeah. which is all very strange, um, yeah. So which is why I go for high council first. If not, I would definitely have to implement that. Yeah, no, that seems like a good move to me. Yeah, I don't agree with this. Like, sure, you have detonation devices and you say it was to block, but it's very awkward. You no, know, now you're trying. You you have to use this action. Then I think you have to figure out how to win a combat. You don't use your spice well for. You, you don't manage to use your tech by... If he bought a tech, I think I'll agree with this play. Yes. Taking the Dreadnought without buying a tech, I think that's only something that you want to do in the first two rounds. Uh, after that, I think a lot of the value of the space is it's a place where you can buy a tech and do something else and like use some Solari efficiently. Mm. But um, a Dreadnought is something that pays off over time kind of like the other things that you buy with solari and so you do it in round one or two it can be still a good deal yeah i I think so yeah i i I didn't think so before but after watching seeing the recent tournament play out i I think i've come to believe about believe it a little bit more (laughs) (laughs) so um so it's round five and i draw tylexu master again Okay. Nice. How many times now? Third time. Three Third times. Time. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, so I had an awkward hand this this round, if I remember right. It had like miscellaneous cards that didn't really let me do what I wanted to do this round, which was try to win the conflict, but they really pulled me in different directions. Well, I needed to take Swordmaster, but then the Imperial Spy uh, felt like I needed to do that now. Um, have you I played think, a lot of Ilban? I, I have not played a lot of Ilban. I've played a few games with him. What, what's your what's your opinion on Ilban? Um, when I look at Ilban and Duke Lido next to each other, I feel like, man, I think Duke Lido is better because his Signet Ring is so good. Um, so I, I have a hard time picking Ilbon, and uh, in particular because when they're both in the game, then they're both a little bit worse. Um, but I do really like him. Uh, I think it's it's pretty fun to have extra card draw built into your character because it lets you focus more on the deck building part of the game, kind of like Armand Dukas does. Um, I think he's pretty good. I think my guess is in Dune plus X. He's worse than Leto, but like not too far behind. And then maybe in Immortality, he's better. I don't know. So some, so some stats from the current tournament is that uh, Ilban is at over 30% win rate and Leto's at like a 20% win rate. Mm-hmm. Does that surprise you? Uh, no, not. I mean, it doesn't surprise me just because I, 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 I think 
people play badly a lot. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me that they'd play badly different amounts with different leaders. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's quite a high number. It's like a 50 game count with with both leaders. I think there's some noise that should be able to filter out. I think there's some bad play that should be able to filter out. Yeah. All I know is whenever I play with Lido, it just feels so powerful. Yeah. So so when they're both in the when they're both in the game, who do you think benefits more? Um I think Ilbon is the one who cares more ab about being able to take Mentat a lot. Um, I see Leto's primary benefit as really being about the Signet Ring, and then there's a little bit about Swordmaster being 7 instead of 8, which which is a, a nice break point. Uh, and then being able to take Mentat for 1 is like much less important to him than it is for Ilbon to be able to draw 2 cards with Mentat. Yeah. Um, okay, so so a bit diverting, but okay. So let's get ready. This game, I I draw a lot of cards. I don't need to draw so many, but um, I think I valued the trashing to see the Taixu Master more. And uh, in this combat, you decide to play your uh, intrigue to get you swords. Uh, to get to get you to first place, but blue uh, green place another intrigue that ties. Is there any reason you play your intrigue for for this combat? Um, I think it is worth spending an intrigue to turn my spice into, uh, well, another intrigue and a faction bump. I mean, that's just a good deal. Yeah, but you will uh, be at four intrigues at that point. Did it worry um, you? So if I didn't play my intrigue, wouldn't I still be at four? Oh, you might, huh? you, because you drew one, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there was avoiding being at four. Okay. At that point. I had wanted earlier in the turn to be able to like draw an intrigue that I wanted to play, but um the intrigue that I wanted to play that I drew was ambush. So uh -huh. I played it. <laughs> okay. Um but I think that even if one of my cards gets stolen, it's still a great deal. Like, um, you know, an influence is very good and I got two intrigues and lost one of them, it's not too bad. Okay. I think the intrigues that I had in my hand were, like, they were okay, but they were not ones that I really needed to hold on to. Hmm. Okay, so so for those taking note, this is round six, and Hundro ships again. So Hundro has shipped round two, round three, round four, round five, round six. And did he, no, he went up two and down one using his ring. Okay, so I don't have Talixu Master. Um, and I'm thinking of getting Talixu, uh, and, and I'm thinking of how am I going to draw. So because uh, because green already went to Mentat, I can't go Mentat, so I go to Research Station, which draws three. And I, I think I have, I, w I will have enough for Spice Must Flow eventually. And I'm very happy to pick up this intrigue. This intrigue. That's very nice. Yeah. This is the moment which I think, okay, I got this game. It's just this, this intrigue to push me over the edge. This, this round's conflict is very disappointing for me because <laughs> yeah. I have five troops and a Dreadnought. Like... It's it's actually hard for me to keep my troop count under control at this point because my signet ring's producing two troops every time. Um, I really want to be able to spend some of them on a conflict. Um, I couldn't put in enough last round as many as I wanted to, but and now this round it's kind of useless. Um, so yeah, that's a that's definitely a bummer. Yeah, I, I, I when when this intrigue flipped, I I felt very happy because I knew like okay, this is this is a complete dead combat round. I also wish that I wanted to go to Highliner instead. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I think you were set up for Highliner. Like, if it was a point, you'd be like, okay, just go to Highliner. No. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Because I, I do have, the like, the five troops in my garrison. So it's a little mm. bit awkward. <laughs> I really just want it to be the level three conflicts already. Yeah. But that is, that is not a realistic wish. Okay. 
So Hanjo has shipped so many times, but for some for for, for some reason, right? If you look at his uh influence, right, he's at zero two one two or one three, right, which mm-hmm. is very very low, right? It's like yeah, yeah. it's kind of surprising. It, mm. it uh, it's like where did all this stuff go? Yeah, so, so it just speaks to how dry this Imperial Mural was. It was. There were just no good access cards. I think many times in this game I had a lot to buy and I was just like, okay, maybe I'll buy one liaison or I'll just not buy at all. So I go to secrets and somehow generate myself into another point because of the the faction bomb entry. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Might as well play it. Yep. So I, I look at this and I'm like, okay, this is the end game point. And I uh I think later on as as it goes around, I'll just talk about it now, is that if you count how much how much uh persuasion I have, I currently have uh nine exactly. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, yeah. seven, eight. Yeah, I think nine, I'm nine, exactly. nine exactly. But I, I really want to play a card, and I want to play this diplomacy because anywhere this diplomacy goes, it goes, it gets me a point. And so, I end up playing my diplomacy and just using my uh, uh, intrigue to buy me a spice monster. Because, mm-hmm. because at this point, I also want to trigger end game. I'm very close to triggering end game. And I think that if I played, um, if I played it slightly differently, I probably could have ended this game, this round as well. I just needed to uh, go to, cause currently I have some wasted, some wasted uh, influence. So I just need to change the influence slightly, and I could have possibly ended this round. But I don't, I don't think it bothers me too much, and I feel very safe at the moment. Yeah. I think it's fine to just go for ending it on round seven. Could 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 you could you recognize the the threat that I was posing? Yeah, I was I was wondering if the game was going to end. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. seemed like you were going to get a spice must flow. Um, you're only one off on a couple influence tracks. Yeah, uh, and maybe you have an entry card. So that's that's four. Mm. Yeah. If only you could uh, get another shuttle fleet somehow. Or like, uh, maybe what could dro- what could reveal uh, Chom? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah Chom would, would do it, right? Maybe uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I guess we'll do. It. Yeah, three points just ju- just from Chom, and you get to buy your victory point for the yeah. last one. Yeah, so I remember at the start of this game when I got to Halixum, I was still wondering where my points would be coming from. I counted four from fr- four from friendships, one alliance. Um, then I counted uh, two Benny Tolixu points and I told myself, okay, I need uh, like three Spice Mask Lows, right? That's like kind of the end state. Uh, and then that's what I was thinking about. Then after so after receiving the the intrigue with the sleeper muscle weekend, I think felt a lot safer because then then the count just dropped by one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think this round is very exciting. This this round is just setting up for the the the, the tricky combat. Yeah, and I put in some troops mostly because I needed to not have them in my garrison anymore. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I I had a little bit of hope that I could get a water out of it, but um, I mean don't really care about the Solari at this point. I really just need to not have so many troops in my garrison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, hundred... so I felt this game, right, that, well, I felt that you were winning all the combats. Then I looked at the points and like, oh, actually you and Hundro actually have the same number of combat points. Yeah, I mean, Hundro won the round one combat and then I didn't try on the, the, the uh, fourth round. Yeah. So. I guess you'll trade it then. Yeah. 
he detonates his so Hundra detonates his his uh, dreadnought. He gets a point there. Uh, no one cares about the Solari, <laughs> and I guess we go to round seven. And then this conflict reveals itself. Do you have? Yep. Do you Disappointing. Have, do you have any feelings about this combat? Yeah, I'm like, oh well, that's too bad. Um, I'm pretty confident that you're going to end the game this round. It doesn't look to me like I can also get to ten, but I'm going to try to get as close as I can, and I'm going to try to maximize the chances of beating you somehow. I okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, certainly, I might as well try to win the conflict, right? Because it, yeah. it's going to be worth at least a point. Yeah. And there's there's no point in holding back for for next round because that looks impossible. Yep. Yeah. So this is round seven. I draw to Alex Master for the fourth time. Um, I think it's quite expected that you go to highliner. I don't think there's anything that anyone can really do to stop you or so possibly what i should have done instead was use my diplomacy to go first to selective breeding and then go to highliner as the second option because no one else can go there right now yeah and i think going to selective breeding might have been better for me it's really hard to tell yeah i think maybe there's a bit of blindness like because you want to go to highliner so much that that you kind of forget about everything else. Well, the other thing is it gives me water back, uh, which can also be useful on a second action. And then the third thing, I think the reason that I chose this is because this is actually drawing me two cards too, right? And I want to see what those cards are before I make other decisions. I know one of my spaces is going to be Highliner. I don't know what I want the other two actions I take to be. Well, that, so that, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. The card before choosing. Yeah, that's but, pretty yeah, good. I'm not sure. So here, Meanwhile, you went Mentat first? Yeah, I went Mentat first. And, and I... And... I grab... Uh, shifting... shifting Is it Shifting Allegiances? Yeah, I grab Shifting Allegiances with uh, Taixu Master. And then I get a... I, I go into Cellar for, the, I think, the first time in the game. And I... Okay. Also get one Faction Bomb, which gets me another point. Yeah, that seems good. Let's get some points. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any thoughts that you're going to use Shifting Allegiances at this point? Or are you just planning to probably use it for Persuasion or what? No, I, I'm definitely using it for a point, right? So based on my current hand, right, I, I just want to go somewhere, go down and up in the, the Emperor and just get a point there. Uh, it's a point that no one can contest. Uh, it is safe. Mm -hmm. And even if I have one Alliance stolen, I'll still be at 10 at the end of the game, end of, end of round 7, which I think is fine. And that's what I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking about how do I stay at 10? And I presume that I'll lose one alliance this conflict. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a chance that you can overcommit onto spacing that leaves me time to, inter to interact to defend my spacing alliance and just prevent you from stealing there. I, gotcha. I, yeah. Um, I went to Research Station, so I think probably it actually ended up being better to go Highliner and then Research Station for uh, instead of Selective Breeding and then Highliner because, well, it, it makes use of the water and it, it, it gets me another uh, beetle, right? Yes. Um, and I think at this point that I will be able to uh, get my fourth beetle and get a point from that. Um, but I didn't. I didn't draw down to my second experimentation, unfortunately. Oh, you missed out on the point. Okay, no matter. We'll, we'll see what happens later. On the point. Yeah, that was one of the points that I could have gotten. And you know, oh, I was you could. This, oh, you have got so round. many points this round. I didn't realize how many points you could have got this round. Uh, yeah, I, I was trying to get all of them because I thought I needed to get all of them to win. So I was taking some slightly risky ones. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, you can see there there are two troops left in my bowl, and both of those need to turn into specimens, not troops, in order <laughs> for this to work. Oh no! Yeah, 
<laughs> oh, I can see why that's so bad. Okay, so 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 what uh what Seven Spirits just mentioned, right, is that because he needs two green cubes, so he needs two Twilight cubes, he cannot really go to uh, a space which generate troops. Because those spaces now will prevent him from um prevent him from getting those green cubes. Unless he has a way of sacrificing them, which which most of the time you, you don't. Uh oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Never thought about it. So what I want to draw here is Liat Kynes and my my other ex experimentation. Because yeah. then I'll be able to get the Spice Mess Flow point. I'll also be able to get the Play Loxu Track point. Um, we know I'm getting another point from Influence because I can go up two on the Bene Gesserit track. <laughs> yep. Um, so that's at least three more. That's respectable, right? Yes. Yes. Um. I think I I think I had op opulence in my hand, which is another point. Yes. So I can get to maybe. Yes, I think you you bought opulence, so you might have opulence as well. So four potential points. Oh, I didn't I didn't see these these lines. Yeah, but I didn't actually draw those cards. Um, so I think what I end up doing here is going to Arakeen, which um, now my chances <laughs> of uh, getting the Tleiloxu point are narrowed down to some other player for some reason buys one of those cards and subject X137 or whatever comes up and I can buy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's a possibility. Yeah. You, you can see Pond's going a bit crazy by him moving his mouse. I, I think he, he has given up on this game. Yeah, and I, I took a little too long here uh, because... <sighs> It was really hard to figure out if there was a, a way to win the game. Yeah, even yeah. Theoretically possible. Yeah. So, so <laughs> it, it, it felt really long, but I think now they explain what you're thinking about, I can understand why it took so long. Yeah. So I ended up using the Arrakis Liaison instead of my Signet Ring because it still gave me that out with um, Subject X whatever um, <laughs> by leaving one, one troop in my bowl. <laughs> but... Would you have? Would you still have enough for Spice Mass Flow? Or do, do you just like risk only it? Like, I'm gonna try to win or nothing at all. Only if I draw the kinds. Okay. So, yeah. But if, if I don't know, if it made sense. Okay. Um, I was, uh, I was struggling to find a way to win there. Okay. But I think that there's uh some miraculous line. So I was thinking about you know whether I should spend the spice you know to. Get an entry. I thought an entry will give me better odds than keeping a spice. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I think finally when it goes around to me, that's what I end up doing. Uh, it should go around to me quite fast. I don't think I think green reveals. So once again, I think Twisted Mentat is a very bad card. I hope this game shows everyone that. <laughs> yeah, I really had your uh, video where you talked about that in mind during this game, as well as during the other game that I played with twisted mentat since then and yeah doesn't seem very good i agree um i do think maybe it's a little better if you don't buy your sword master um, yes if you have both it's just like too much yes it's like you normally when you want to draw cards you want to draw cards to buy a spice must flow but you have twisted mentat and you want to draw cards because you have twisted mentat it like doesn't make sense mm -hmm. yeah so I conspire, yeah. I just get intrigued, it doesn't matter. And this was the second time this game that I was one short of buying Spice Mustard. Yeah. Okay, you, then, then you position Steal the Alliance. Yep, well, might as well take that away from you instead of just taking the Bene Gesserit point myself. Well, you really could have got to 10. And, and you have sto st still stolen an Alliance. I didn't realize how close you were. Yeah, so I guess you ended with a uh, eleven. Points, yeah, I right? ended with and eleven. I could have gotten two more, which still only would have been ten, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So this game, Hundro ships almost every single round, or every single round that matters. Um he buys detonation devices to block us. However, he ends with six points. Um, no alliances. Two combat victories. 
and, and I think even with two com- two early combat victories on the shipping character, like if you're playing X, right, I think you'll be super scared of Hanjo. But what ends up happening is that, um, yeah, the game ends round seven, and Tiger Master wins the game. Yeah, it it definitely feels like Hundra should have some more influence uh, on the tracks with with all that shipping. Um, and I guess he got one point from his uh, two dreadnoughts and detonation devices. And if the game had been going on longer, maybe that would have paid off. Yeah, if you can get two two points from that. That seems pretty good. Yeah, um, but that was a lot of actions to do that. So thanks for watching this video with me. Uh, I want to showcase Tarixu Master and I think this is a good game to showcase it. I, I think a lot of people are currently on the forum talking about whether they should ban this card uh, and I don't think there's there's no data on it and so everyone's just talking from their personal experience. So a lot of people are very bitter about it and some people have seen it and have not seen it being very powerful. Personally, I only feel that it's very powerful in this exact circumstance is that you force a reshuffle and it's in your first rotation, you draw it round two, round three, and you just draw it, you just see it all the time from then, from then on out. Um, so maybe to end this video, do you think Toilet Master should be banned? Um, yeah, so I've participated in some of those discussions and... I guess I I voted for I I would do something about it and I think in my own personal copy of the game that I play with friends at home uh I think I'm going to put some stickers on it that uh put it down to only one research during your reveal turn and I think that'll make it a a good card but but not like a one of the standout cards. Um I think I mostly agree with you that it it is not really needing to be modified or banned um the reason i voted for it was more along the lines of i'm i would be interested in uh playing a version of the game that that had several tweaks along those lines and i think this is a reasonable one though it, i have complicated feelings about that because i think most of the house rules that people come up with for games like this to try to fix things that they think are overpowered most of those house rules i think are bad um, so I don't know. I don't know what I really want in terms of whether I would encourage the community to do more um, tweaks of the nature of banning Playlocksu Master or changing what it does or anything like that. Um, it does seem to me like it isn't it isn't uh, the most powerful card. Uh, and I think it is a little bit surprising that people latched onto it in, instead of other things. Okay, so thank you, Seven, for your input this game and for your input on Toilet Master. And I hope for everyone who has watched this video, I hope you all enjoyed this viewing of our game yesterday. So thanks for watching. Yep, thank you. I enjoyed talking through everything. I feel like um, a little, a little interesting experience. I felt like we commentated on the, the gameplay less than I expected and kind of went on more digressions. And uh, it's probably mostly my fault, um, but I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. <laughs>